Welcome back to the channel guys, for the Woods from Gaming, we're back with another video. And that is the review for Mad Max. Right, so, this walkthrough did take a little while to complete, but uh, we finally did it. Now it is time to talk about the game itself. So, obviously this game is set in, like, it's based on Mad Max series, made by Avalanche Studios, same people that's behind Hogwarts Legacy. It's a good game, don't get me wrong, brilliant story, um, character development on Max isn't really there, and as you can see, game mechanics are brutal. <laughs> but um, like I said, character development for Max isn't actually there. Like you start off as a distrustworthy person, um, then you meet a hunchback called Chumbucket, who slowly gains your trust as he works on Magnus Opus, which is your car throughout the entire game. Your whole point of living in the game is to find the Interceptor, your black on black car, before the game started. Which was taken away from you at, like in the first ever cutscene. And then um Yeah. Your, it throughout the game it seems like there's character development for Matt. But then at the very end, everything changes. Which kind of sucks. But anyway, that's all I'm saying about the story without spoiling too much of it. And as you can see, combat is very smooth. It's very similar to Batman Arkham. Any Arkham, or any Batman game really. Except for Gotham Knights. Can't really talk about that as I haven't yet played it. There's brutal finishes like that. Combo finishes as well, such as if I can actually do it without killing someone normally. Like that. And then obviously you can use your shotgun in combat. That's definitely one way to deal with them. But anyway, uh the open world is literally enriched with things to do, like scavenging parts or scrap from anywhere really. Uh, you have to keep a watch on your water canteen as water is the only way to regenerate health apart from dog food that you can find. And um, yeah, there's also enemy camps around the game as well like the one we're currently doing um, now let's talk about things I love about the game combat the open world uh, customization of Max and the Magnus Opus every upgrade you want to do you have to have the scrap to do so Otherwise, you won't be able to do those said upgrades because invalid scrap equals no upgrade. Oh. Controls in this game, uh, let's just say they're weird. Jump is LT, run is RT, and roll is RB on the Xbox One. Like, that's extremely strange considering the time period like time frame of this game's release which I believe was like 2015 so no other game had these controls so it was very irregular to say the least and very frustrating especially if you've been away from the game for let's say six months and then decided to finally go back to it to try to complete it and then you're trying um, buttons you already know that does for things in other games so you thought it would be fine 
on this when in reality it just doesn't work out. Super annoying. But um, yeah, like I said before, the story's really good. I actually liked the story in this game. And um, yeah, that's basically everything I'm gonna say at this point with that type of stuff. There's some collectibles. Well, wouldn't really say collectibles. Um like some backstory with history relics that you can find every now and often like every now and then throughout the game uh, which are nice to find but really does nothing for character development or anything special like you don't get anything for finding them like there's no XP system in this game. You don't get scrap for finding the uh, the history relics. You just your character just makes a snide remark about whatever the picture or history relic is talking about. Just not really that great of a system, to be honest. It's just doesn't make any sense for the history relics to be there. Yeah, the game's based in a post-apocalyptic um, thing in the wastelands. Yeah, sure. Of course, there's going to be history relics every now and then, but without them doing much, there's like, cool, history relic. Yay, what do they actually do for us? Didn't make any sense. Right, um, now let's talk about my rating for the game. As much as I do like the open world and stuff, there's one big problem. The driving mechanics. Or I should say the lack of... Just isn't there. So that's going to impact my rating. So, um, let's just say the rating is a... 5.5 .5 out of 10 mainly because of driving mechanics and the lack of character development but the reason it is 5.5 .5 and not lower is because the open world the weather changes like a sandstorm coming out of nowhere tornadoes coming out of nowhere that can actually impact the way your character moves or actually damage your car as well whilst you're driving that was mind blowing at the time that this game released no other game was doing that so that was a big plus and then like I'd say character customization car customization so yeah that's why it's a 5.5 .5 and not lower like a 4 or a 3 because driving mechanic that's something that's a big part of the game. The only way to get across the map is to drive. And they can't be bothered to like fix the driving mechanic before they release the game. Oof. That's a big problem. Sorry about Avalanche Studios, but yikes. <laughs> so yeah, 5.5 .5 out of 10. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, turn the notification bell on, join Wolfgang by hitting that subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, Wolfspin Gaming, signing off.